Hello and welcome back to everyone. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about how to create a good believable hair with Maya. And I'm going to talk about the principles behind creating this uh, believable hair. And it's going to be a Viking style hair. It is still not completed, so this will be part one where I'm going to talk about more of the concept and the idea behind creating this hair. And in part two, I'm going to show you how uh, this created hair can be imported into Unreal Engine. So let's start with the concepts and the principles of creating believable hair. So this is my reference sheet. First thing that you need to know is you need always to use reference for hairs and don't use reference from games. Use real life examples. Go to Google and if you're creating a Viking style hair like me, uh, I just downloaded a few images of Lagata from uh, the series Vikings. As you can see here, I have a little bit more high res image of some uh, kind of a hair in this Viking style. So uh, this is my spreadsheet. And the first thing over here is the explanation behind the hair. Uh, and I'm going to show examples of a bad hair. And a good one. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that you need to understand is uh, you need to know if you're going to create a long hair, a short hair, and what kind of style you want. For example, here, as I mentioned before, I'm creating Viking style. But if you are creating a different kind of hairstyle, you need to gather as much information as you can from real life photos. Again, don't use gaming uh, example of hair, of hair like this, like this one. Use real life examples because they give more detailed information about the follicles and the hair uh, chunks where they are going, the direction, how they grow, etc. All right, so let's start with the explanation of uh, the zones of the hair. Here is our transition zone, the first zone. In this transition zone, the follicles and the hair chunks are more thin, as you can see on this second image. Here, the hairline is thin. What this means is that your hair is growing over here and you can see beyond it. So you, uh, your look and the lightning can penetrate and go to the defined zone. The defined zone is where the hair is getting more dense. So here, from this example, here at the front line is my transition zone and my defined zone is a few centimeters away from my first transition zone and going inside of the hair uh, scalp, my defined zone. Let me just show you on the other example. Here, for example, my transition zone. Here you can see the thick, the thick hairs. And behind it, you can find my defined zone getting more dense. So your, your look cannot penetrate it. Another thing that you, you should keep in mind is that the hair often grows as a chunks. As you can see here, we have this chunk, this chunk, those chunks. And here, this one going all the way back over here. But the hair more often grows on chunks. Here you can see again my transition zone and my defined zone behind it. So keep that in mind that, let me give you a bad example. Here, uh, this is Mass Effect. In this 3D, this hair is pretty bad. As you can see, it's, it's look like a helmet on her on her head. They don't have a transition zone. They, they just have this defined zone and it looks very cut. Even though they try to create this, it's not looking good because it's not on chunks. As you can see, this is looking like a shore of a sea. Everything is so even. You should do first the transition zone. Then this should go like a chunk from here. Maybe like that. And here you should have another chunk. And here you should have another back chunk. And they should have different level. This could be here, this could be here, this could be here. 
and a little bit of transition zone. That's how you should make uh, the hair look good. Another thing is uh, they created everything going to the ponytail over here, which is also not right. You should have some hair growing over here, maybe some small hairs and some flyover hairs, just like this. This is not a bad idea for this flyover head, but it's too uh, dense and it's just sitting like a, a macaroni or something like that, which is pretty awful. Let me show you a good example of fly, fly out hairs. This is a great example. You can see how thick it is, how good looking it is, and how there are few of them and they're just crossing over, creating this, this pretty nice and good looking space. Let's go to the bad example. Nothing like it. Another bad example is this. They try to create those chunks, but again, it's too helmy and it's it's just like a sci-fi helmet, not not a uh, not a hair. All right, so let's talk about where the hair should start. Let me just zoom on Lagata from the Vikings, and here starts her transition zone and how do you know where the transition zone starts you place the starting point is over here at the at the glabella of your skull and the best thing that you can do is from here up to the starting point of your hair it is eight centimeters to ten centimeters in length so from point one, from the glabella to the starting point of our uh, transition zone in the hair, it is eight to 10 centimeters. There is another trick that you can use. You can place four fingers from this, uh, from this glabella starting point. If you place four fingers, one, two, three, four, for example, if this is my hands and I place four fingers over here, this will be the height that my transition zone should start. So this is a little trick that you can use in order to, to know where your transition zone should start. All right. The next thing is the flow of the hair. As you can see on this, uh, on this image, the flow of the hair is going in this direction. And another thing is that you should know how to separate the hair. And here at this image, you can see that the separation is happening over here. Just like here, they've done a separation of the chunks over here, just like that. But this is a bad, uh, bad idea because the transition is too hard to go like that. Here they make a very good transition over here. For the for the uh, separation in and they made the hair chunks going in that direction and they just separated uh, the hair at this point this is great great hair great looking viking hair and another thing that i want to talk about is the negative space when you create hair let's take those bad examples here you have those chunks going into the ponytail and it looks like a helmet. There is no positioning of the hair back and front. What do I mean by that is this is a great example of, of a positioning of depth of the hair. If we follow the chunks, you see that you have this one over here and those are going behind this one under it, creating this great negative spaces in our hair, just like that. And this is giving a huge volume to our hair, those negative spaces and the idea that our chunks are cross matching one above another. And they're just flying over here. Here I create another negative space. It is pretty important to analyze your reference very close. Take your time, don't rush it. Flying over. 
yeah and pretty much creating this style back and forth and cross matching the hair will give you this great look of the hair if you if we examine here here is a negative space here going up great check this out here negative space good flow good flow a little bit of negative space good flow and it's flying all over the place and those fly over hairs are just great so let me show you my model where i'm at at the moment and how i create my cards so one tip about the cards never create cards like this let me just show you never create a flat card like this this is pretty pretty wrong because it's not giving you a volume for example if we start shaping this card at some point let me just just like that just like that and if we start going around it you see that it looks pretty flat so what i'm doing with my cards i duplicate a few cards here three cards and i'm just placing them with a little bit rotation one over it over another so it creates a little bit of volume i create here again three cards here again three cards but cross matching differently and i'm going from dense which i'm going to use for the base of my head to more thick hair which i'm going to use for my flyover hairs even in the thick hairs i use two cards in order to give the volume i've created different levels for example let me turn on my grease pencil you can see i didn't start my hair chunk right from here i started creating chunks here one chunk here another chunk cross matching them and giving them different length and different positions here 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 a little bit of of a side chunk so always try to break the silhouette and create uh, different positions for the chunk different starting points from the chunk they have a different starting position and if you give your chunks a little bit of variety in the starting position just like i gave mine it's gonna look pretty good and let me show you where i am at the moment at the moment i'm working on my dense zone on my uh, on my hair and see my flow how my uh, chunks are flowing and i'm just cross matching them as you can see here i'm creating volume on my hair and i'm still at my base layers filling up i still have uh, some gaps over here that i need to fill up but see how i twist my hair and how they are following path and natural growth of the hair and how they are connecting to each other with each other here i've created a twisted hair and i've also created the card connected to this twisted hair just like that here i've also created few cards which are connecting connecting to this twisted hair and that this is how uh, your hair will start look natural and the flow is pretty important uh, so let's create a one hair card so i can demonstrate to you let's say i want to create this chunk and i'm going to select all the three parts i'm going to combine them i'm going to delete history now i'm going to go to my side view and i'm going to align all my hair chunks like this because when i start twisting them except uh, the edge i want them to twist at the same level and here i don't have enough resolution so i'm gonna add a little bit of loops at every stage just like this all right so this chunk is ready i'm gonna move it over here and let's see where i need to place it maybe i'll place it over here behind the ear 
let's do it I'm gonna move it like this I'm gonna move my pivot point over there I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees and I'm gonna start using deformers in order to move my hair chunk the first deformer that I'm going to use is my bend deformer I'm gonna move it like this okay so I created my bend deformer and I placed my hair over here what I need to do is I'm gonna need to manipulate my bend deformer so I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna go to the attributes and I'm gonna start curving it so what I need to do is I'm gonna place this card and I need to go over here and down around my ear now I'm gonna move the lower bound like that and I'm gonna move my bend deformer a little bit like this you can also rotate your bend deformer just like this and this is this is my first bend, bend deformer I'm gonna create another one and so I'm gonna place it over here I'm just playing with the bend deformers and we are going to have great results with it I'm gonna bend it over here maybe like that I'm gonna move the lower bound like this and I'm gonna start moving my bend form just like that okay I'm gonna twist it a little bit here not looking bad I'm gonna move my high bound like this I'm not worried about penetrating the ear because I'm gonna fix that later on I'm gonna add one more bend deformer I'm gonna start curving backwards I'm gonna move my high bound over here a little bit like that and I'm gonna rotate it a little bit like that all right I'm starting to cross match my hairs and I need to create it maybe go inside okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete history and I'm gonna start working a little bit by hand on this one to make it more believable it's going to be pretty easy nothing to worry about pretty much let's go over here these hair chunks let's go over here I'm gonna rotate those a little bit place them over here I'm gonna create one more here in order to fill this gap but right now it's looking good just like that just like that and it's pretty it's pretty generic it, it must go to the body of our character so I'm gonna push it a little bit like that push it a little bit like that let's go here maybe create a rotation over there tie up a little bit the chunks and make them go under this one maybe rotate them move it a little bit like this it's pretty fun process because uh, we're creating it in real time and you can tweak it a lot to look good here I'm gonna shrink my chunks in order to uh, place it more closely to my head just like that here I'm gonna do the same and yeah we have one more chunk over here created for the hair so this is pretty much my process how I'm creating this uh, 
here model by hand replace each chunk and now I need to create one more behind there cross match it I need to create a little bit of follicles uh, and chunks over here uh, to, to connect it but this is pretty much how I do it and I'm going to show you how to set it up the materials and everything in Unreal Engine in order to look like triple A here from this example the Viking real time here so thank you guys for watching and tuning in. If you have more questions about how to create uh, this here, just uh, put it in the comments. If you are not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. And if you like to get my hair cards like a package, I have them in the description below. You can just buy them for a, a few bucks and use them to create a real time long hair. So thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you like the video, put a thumb up. And once I created the next part, I will show you how this hair will look in Unreal Engine. Thank you again. Bye.